connect with the body again after a few days of work and life. <laughs> so tonight, um, why don't we just go ahead and stand and get our minds focused on the Lord. And he's been so good to us. He's done so much in our life. He's opened doors that only God can open. He's done things that he's healed us when we were sick. He's been there when we didn't know who to turn to, and he, he was always there. And so tonight, I just, if you can join with me as I just focus on him and think about those good things and open myself to the word tonight as pastor preaches later, let's, let's get our minds focused and ready for another dose of the word in our life tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Are you thankful that he's wonderful? Let's just take a minute and praise the Lord. Amen. I thank you, Lord. I will never know that cost, Lord, but I'm thankful for it, Jesus. 
Amen. We take some time and just worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, that you are lovely. You are wonderful. You're all together so good to us tonight, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, for Lord, that we could feel your presence. Amen. 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 So thankful to feel his presence here tonight. You won't be able to find that at Walmart or anywhere else, but in the, with the people of God in his presence. Amen. Lord bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, everyone, for gathering with us this evening and online. We just have one announcement that we want to make you aware of. Uh, this February 28th, and I believe that's the last day of February. I don't think it's a leap year, is it? If It's going to leap right over me. Um, but uh, February 28th, that's a Monday. Uh, that is at 7 p.m. at this location, Christian Life Center here in Golden Valley. We're going to have our annual business meeting. And so we invite all of our members to come and be a part of our annual business meeting uh, that we take care of every year. Again, February 28th at 7 p.m. here at this location. So mark that on your calendar, and uh, it's going to be a good time, I believe. And uh, uh, Lord bless you this evening. Pastor Kent is coming at this time. Hallelujah. I tell you, it feels good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It's wonderful when his presence kind of just sweeps on in like that, isn't it? Amen. To be able to enjoy the goodness and the mercies of the Lord. I'm going to get right into the scripture here tonight. I feel like the Lord has spoke to me this morning. I, I like to do my reading and the scriptures in the morning. And, and of course, I, I read all kinds of news and things that are happening around the world and just to make myself aware of different things that are happening. One of the articles that I read this morning it, it it was from a from one of the sites that I I go to and it has something to do with uh, the, my Finnish background and the culture that I have. But there was an article that was written. It was called "The Religious Freedom on Trial in Finland." Religious Freedom on Trial it was written by a man named Christopher Mannion. He had a PhD, and um, then I read the article and I, I made some comments on it as well. On Facebook, but then I was, I was driving in my vehicle today, my truck. I also heard the the same story on Fox News, so I knew that it was it was it was something that was something bigger than just a a small article that appeared in a foreign country, a foreign nation. And the the Fox News article, I looked it up here this afternoon and. Uh, I want to read some of these things here to you uh, from that article. Uh, I, I quote tonight. It says, most Americans are familiar with such federal departments as defense and treasury. Their names indicate what they do. While most Americans are still asleep Monday morning, the Finnish member of parliament, Pavi Rossinen, hey, amen, and I, I like to hear those names because uh, they're very familiar to my ear, and the Lutheran bishop, uh, Johanna Pojala, entered a courtroom in Helsinki, Finland. The reason that they were in their courtroom is this. They are on trial for their faith in court proceedings that began three weeks ago. And it concluding an almost three-year-long campaign of legal harassment uh, from the Finnish government. They and the prosecution made their final arguments on Tuesday. Pavi Rossinen is a 62-year-old medical doctor. Grandmother of seven faces three charges of so-called ethnic agitation for expressing her belief in the teachings of the Bible. By having published a pamphlet on marriage in 2004 and for taking part in a discussion on a radio show in 2019, she's being called into question, and for a tweet with a picture of a Bible passage, for this, she is facing up to two years in prison if convicted. Meanwhile, Bishop Pojala faces a single charge of ethnic agitation for merely hosting Rassinen's booklet on his church's website. And that's it. If convict, convicted, Bishop Pojala faces the same prospect of two years in prison 
as well. The article goes on to say that the absurd, the absurd anti-Christian hostility inherent in this case cannot be overstated. The prosecutor began the trial in January by reading unrelated Bible verses as examples of bad speech. This week, the prosecu prosecution continued its final arguments by stating that the Bible cannot overrule Finnish law and the use of the word sin can be harmful. Finland is a European liberal democracy that ostensibly promises its citizens basic human rights, such as freedom of speech, religion, assembly, equality under the law, property rights, among others. However, the Finnish government seems to have forgotten these core values, acting more like a woke theocracy as it attempts to punish citizens who dare contradict the secular dogmas of the day. As a politician, Rassanen should have every right to engage in debate on controversial topics without facing criminal uh, charges. And as a Christian minister, Bishop Pojala should at the very least be free to publish a pamphlet articulating a biblical worldview without the possibility of jail time, as should all citizens regardless of their vocation or calling in life. For many years, many have warned that Western governments have been overtaken by radical secularism, guided by a disdain of Christianity, and that the slippery slope would result in people facing trial for living out their beliefs in, public, in, in the public square. In Finland, the, sl the slide has stopped, and that day has come. The article goes on to say, yet this is not just a Finnish problem for the Finnish people, with media from all over the world covering this case, it is a critical reminder of what is to come, especially here in America when a modern society chooses to push acceptance of radical and unproven ideologies rather than embracing the very freedoms of religion and speech that allowed the West to flourish. It is evidently clear that the rot has already begun to set in in our state of the Atlantic. This is not just a Finnish problem for the Finnish people. For legislation passed recently by the United States House of Representatives underlines this point. The Equality Act passed last year would effectively outlaw disagreement on matters of sex and gender ideology. This poses a clear and dangerous threat to say any American who adheres to or dares publicly profess widely held Orthodox religious beliefs on marriage, sexuality, or what used to be commonly accepted beliefs about the biology of men and women. Just last week, the House passed the Global Respect Act, which would allow for visa sanctions to be placed on foreign individuals perceived to be out of step with the left's new and radical gender ideology. To be, to be perfectly clear, not only do these bills fail to protect the religious freedom, they declare total war on it. The events in Finland should serve as a nine-alarm fire to those who cherish the very political experiment in ordered liberty that enabled America and Western civilization to flourish. The basic rights of religious freedom and free speech are attack under the globe. I go on to read... <clears throat> Their battle is not only legal and political, but spiritual. I want to say here tonight, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I believe that that statement is the surest thing our world uh, could adhere to. Jesus is coming soon. The fact, the fact is that uh, that statement is the blessed hope of the church Jesus is coming soon. And not only is that the blessed hope of the church, it is the redeeming hope for all of Israel, and it is the only hope for our pagan world that we are presently living in. Jesus is coming soon. And so I've chosen tonight to speak on that subject, that Jesus is, in fact, coming soon. When I recognize, when I recognize that not only in Finland, but all across the world and, and rapidly in Canada and United States of America, these, 
subject matters are definitely becoming more and more difficult to deal with in our society for the fact that you can talk about Jesus is coming soon and it can be, in fact, something of a hate message. Amen. Or you can talk about the fact that a man and a woman uh, were created in the image of God and that can be a hate message message. We have to understand what is going on in our world. Jesus is coming soon. The Bible tells us that just after Jesus had spoken and told the disciples that he was going to go away, and their hearts were broken, they were saddened, Jesus reassured them that his going away would not be a permanent going away. I want to read here tonight from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. We're going to read the first three verses here, and it says this. Let not your heart be troubled. Of course, he was speaking to the disciples. They, were, they had been with him three and a half years. They had followed his teaching. They had thought for, uh, thought for the moment that he would set up a, a religious kingdom on earth at that time. And they were very disturbed at the fact that Jesus was uh, going to be going to uh, a crucifixion instead of setting up a government for them and, and, and a life change for them. So Jesus said these words, Let not your heart be troubled, for if you believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus said, I will come again. I want you to hear those words and, and, and let them ring in your heart, your spirit, and recognize Jesus said, I will come again. And he said, and I will come again to receive you unto myself, and where I am, there may you be also. Church, we can be assured tonight that Jesus is coming again. Amen. In fact, the scriptures as we read them are full of the prop prophecies of his coming, not only not only in his first coming and the recognition that he was going to come uh, to be the savior of the world, but the second coming is also mentioned many, many times within the pages of scripture. The Bible said in the fourth verse, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. This is found in the book of Acts. Verse 5, John Lee truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time, will you at this moment restore again the kingdom to Israel? The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 7, that Jesus said unto, you, unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. In other words, that, that uh, you can ask the question, you can ask the question, but you really don't know the answer to that question. But he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of all the earth. These are things that we know that Jesus said, we will be, we will be witnesses. Verse 9 said, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up. That's called the ascension, amen. And a cloud received them out of their sight. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Obviously, angels, amen. Verse 11 which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up for you into heaven, listen closely, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming again. If we could not find one other verse in the pages of Scripture, amen, in all of the Bible that speaks to the fact that Jesus is coming again, this one would be sufficient for us tonight. Amen. Why stand you gazing? This same Jesus, which you have watched go up, is going to come back in like manner. Jesus is coming 
again. I think it is very important that we would recognize that the Bible that prophesied of Jesus' first coming gives three times the amount of prophecies concerning his second coming. Amen? Amen. If it was important for the Word of God to tell us of his first coming, it is three times more important for us to recognize that Jesus is coming again. We cannot get away from the fact we need to be looking upward, amen. We need to be looking outward and onward, amen, and recognizing that Jesus is coming again. You see, at, at Jesus' first coming, everyone thought he was going to set up a kingdom at that time. However, they had completely overlooked the prophecies concerning Jesus' rejection and the fact that he would go to the cross and bear our sins upon that tree. But now... Now people are looking back to Jesus first coming and neglecting the fact that he is coming again. We like to celebrate the fact that he came, amen, he took away our sins. But oftentimes we don't preach enough about the fact he is coming again, amen. And I want to tell us tonight we need to be ready and aware that the Lord could come at any moment. And the Bible says in a moment and a twinkling of an eye, Jesus could come Again, it is only at the revelation that Jesus had to die and be resurrected, be caught away into heaven that we once again turn our attention to Jesus' second coming. If you read the gospel accounts, I've read them in Matthew chapter 24, in Matthew chapter 25, in Mark chapter 11 and 13, in Luke chapter 21, you would find that the primary thing that Jesus taught his disciples, was that he would return again. All of those chapters in the Bible are dedicated to the teaching that Jesus is coming again. It's in these chapters of the Scripture that Jesus answered the age-old question of when. When, when are you coming again? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3 says this, As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, and they said, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming at the end of the world? When and what? When and what at the end of the world? And the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the church at Rome concerning Jesus coming again, he wrote these words in Romans chapter 8 in verse 19. For the earnest expectation... Of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's an earnest expectation. It's, it's a longing and the desiring for the coming of the Lord a second time. Romans 8 and 22 says this. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Amen. Even creation, God's creative power, God's creation is waiting for the second coming of the Lord. And Paul wanted to remind those early Christians, those early believers, about the second coming of the Lord. In fact, is as I read these next passages of Scripture, I want us to recognize this was the major theme that was presented in all of the letters to all of the churches of the then known day. Amen. That Jesus is coming. Again, get yourself ready, church. Be ready because I recognize that Jesus is coming again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51, as he wrote to the church at Corinth, he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Amen. In a moment and in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised, incorru raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Paul wanted the early church to know, and we need to understand, it could happen at any time, amen, when the trumpet of God will sound, amen, and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible, and we that are alive and remain, we shall be changed. Jesus is coming again. We need to be ready for that coming of the Lord. First, First Thessalonians chapter 4 and 16 says this, for the Lord himself shall descend 
from heaven with a shout. Just as he ascended, and remember what the angel said? Just as he uh, went up, he's coming again just the same way. This passage of Scripture tells us he's not only coming quietly, he's coming with a shout. Hallelujah. Oh, I want you to know Jesus is coming again. And when he comes, there's going to be a great shout throughout the heavens. Amen. The angels of God will be with him. Amen. The Bible says this, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, hallelujah. Something in me tonight wants to let you know that Jesus is coming again. With the circumstances that are happening in our world, with the things that are, are happening all in our societies, all across our world, we have to recognize that second coming is soon. Amen. First Thessalonians 4 and 17 says this. Then, then... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you recognize there is a coming of the Lord? Amen. And there will be a catching away of the church. Amen. The rise, and we call it the rapture. That word is not in the scripture, but the, the word catching away is, amen. There will be a catching away of the church, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. The word of God tells us in Titus chapter 2, 11 through 13, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Why? Verse 13 gives us the answer. Because we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to recognize the word of God is sure. Hallelujah. The word of God is sure. Jesus is coming again. He's coming for a people that are prepared. He's coming for a people that have washed themselves white in the blood of the Lamb. He's coming for a people that have given themselves to the work of God and the things of God. Jesus is coming again, and we need to be ready for that coming. Somebody, amen? Hallelujah. We've got to recognize, amen, no matter what our world has to say, no matter how the world tries to come against the church of the living God, the word of God is sure Jesus is coming again. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear. Notice, again, the scripture says, when he comes, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Amen. Amen. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Hallelujah. The recognition that Jesus is coming ought to cause the church to live away, amen, that is above the reproach of this world, amen. The recognition that Jesus could come at any moment should cause us to live our lives in such a way that is pleasing to our mighty God. Because Jesus is coming again, and he's coming in the moment and a twinkling of an eye. Oh, I feel it in the spirit tonight. Somehow we've got to prepare ourselves and be ready for his coming. Amen. Because I feel it, his coming is soon. The scripture goes on to say in the book of Jude, Verse 14 and 15, and Enoch, who was the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. This is Enoch, the seventh man from Adam. The seventh man from Adam. Generations ago, people long ago, talked about the fact that Jesus is going to come with ten thousands of his saints. Hallelujah. 
Oh, my, I can feel it. I can see it in my eye. Oh, how it's going to happen that the Lord is going to descend. Amen. The saints of God will rise up to meet him in the air. The angels of the Lord will be with him. What a marvelous meeting that will be. So, he said, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly of, among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed in all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Oh, my. Oh, my. I would be afraid to talk against the things of God. I would be afraid to say that the word of God is not sure. I would be afraid to try to, try to preach a doctrine that goes against what God's word has to say. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because there's a God that's going to come. He's going to be the judge of all the world. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 and 8 says this. That be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. I'm telling you, be patient under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. He has long had patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. I believe we're living in an age of the latter rain. Amen. We're living in an age in which God is going to pour out his spirit in such great fashion. We can hardly fathom what God desires to do in this end time hour. But we're living in the day of the latter rain. Amen. The day in which that God will, in fact, impart gifts unto the church and impart his presence and his grace unto the church. Even as we felt it as we come into the house here tonight and begin to lift up his name. Amen. He said, be patient. Until the coming of the Lord, because the husband then waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long had patience for it. Until that he received the early and the latter rain. Be also patient and establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I hope this is getting into our hearts tonight. I hope what we are recognizing Amen. This world is not my home. We're just a passing through. Amen. I hope that we would recognize that the, the, the cares and the problems and the circumstances that we're dealing with in our life, they are so temporary compared to what eternal life will be. Amen. I hope that we can realize no matter what comes against us in this day, in our hour, amen, it is just a puff compared to what will be in eternity. Hallelujah. Oh my, Jesus is coming again. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. I'm reading as I go through the passages of the scripture, even in the New Testament. These are not every passage of scripture. There's just a few. But what, what does the Bible said? And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Oh, come on. You recognize it is going to happen. He shall appear. The chief shepherd will appear. You shall. I shall. We shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Ha! <laughs> Is it worth it, you say, to live for God, to love the Lord, to follow in peace and holiness with all men? Is it worth to live that way in life, following obedience to the things of God? Oh, yes, it is. For you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Hallelujah. Amen. Almost every book, almost every book that we read in the New Testament mentions what we call the blessed hope of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so to me, it is very obvious tonight that the church in our age... In our dispensation, the hour in which that we are living in, still needs to put a very high emphasis on the teaching that the Bible gives us concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible closes in the book of Revelation with these words in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 20. He which testifies of these things saith these words, surely I come quickly. 
Surely I come quickly and amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Church, we've got to have that hunger, that desire, that longing in our soul and our spirit. Amen for the coming of the Lord. Oh, I was thinking of that old song as I come to church here tonight. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon. Many will seek their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of our hearts shall rise to meet the Lord in the skies. Jesus is coming soon. Trumpets will sound. Amen. If the Bible has put such a large emphasis, a heavy emphasis, on the coming of the Lord, I think that it would be right for us to pay close attention to the signs of his coming. The signs of his coming. I've not taken time this evening to prepare a message on the signs of his coming. I think we'll go with that on another Wednesday night. But I want us to hear the word one more time again. Jesus is coming soon. I want you to stand with me tonight. We're early. We're early. But here's what I like us to do as a church tonight. I like this time to be a time of recognition, yes. Reading the word, yes. Hearing the word, yes. But I want us to come before the Lord and pray. Help us to be ready, O oh Lord. Help us to be ready. We have, we have 25, 30. If you're listening online, if you're listening online tonight, this is the time that we take time to pray. This is the time we take time to seek the face of God. Amen. This is the time that we allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister into us. This is the time that we allow the, the voice of God to speak to our heart. Amen. So I'd like for you, if you would, would you gather around this altar with me? Amen. Let's seek the Lord. Let's allow the Word of God to get into our heart, our mind, in our spirit. With the recognition that, yes, Jesus is coming, coming soon. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, we've come before you here tonight, O oh Lord. Oh, we've come through a two-year span, O oh God, of many difficulties, Lord, within our societies. Not only here in, in America, oh, but all around the world, oh God. Ha! We have, we have witnessed, oh God, some of these end-time Things that would happen, oh Lord God, in our world. We're hearing, oh God, the rumblings, oh God, of governments, oh God, coming against citizens, oh Lord Jesus. And governments trying to take power from people, oh Lord God, when they try to preach your word or when they proclaim your word, oh Lord.